Good morning everyone and welcome to our service of morning prayer brought to you from the parish of Brayton. It's really good to have you with us this morning. As always we have emailed out the order of service and the reading and hymn sheets so if you have those that's great please do follow along and join in with the words in bold. If you don't have them don't worry and um, just allow God to speak to you through the words of the service and join in where you can. But if you would like to receive those things in future week, weeks, then as always, the details of how you can do that can be found in the description box below this video. So we're going to begin this morning, as always, by lighting our candle to remind us that God is with us wherever we worship this morning. So if you have a candle at home that you'd like to light, you might want to do that now as I light this one. So let's take a few moments in quiet and still ourselves in God's presence as we come to worship this morning. Today is All Saints Day, a day on which we remember those people through whose lives we've seen the grace of God powerfully at work, sometimes in extraordinary and remarkable circumstances and other times in the ordinary day-to-day -day of life. We give thanks for their example today and we remember that as Christians, through baptism we are all members of that company of saints, that huge family united in Jesus. So what better way to begin today than by singing the hymn For All the Saints. The words can be found on your reading sheet. Oh, 
We're now on page two of our order of service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together the words of confession on page three. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pete will now lead us in singing the Benedictus. Today's Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, beginning at verse 1. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under the foot. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pete will now bring us our reflection. Achoo! (laughs) Well, well, I don't know about you, but I think we've all learned to to sneeze uh, over the last number of months in what I might describe as a more tactful, more strategic, more careful way during this pandemic, haven't we? But you know, however we sneeze, we can be pretty much guaranteed that someone in our vicinity will turn to us when we sneeze and say, bless you, bless you. It's a really interesting word that, isn't it? Blessing, to say to someone, bless you. We use it a lot like this, of course, when we, after someone sneezes. 
And we often use it in lots of different contexts to, to share something of God's blessing with others, not least when we come to the end of a time of worship and fellowship as we're doing today. And do you know what? Jesus uses the word blessing as well. And it won't have slipped your attention, of course, that he uses it a lot in today's gospel reading. But what did he mean by it? And today, as we celebrate the saints of the church, what does it mean? What does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean for them to be blessed and for us to be blessed as today's saints too? Now, clearly, it's no coincidence that those who put our lectionary together chose this gospel reading for today. I mean, you know my occasional gripes about the lectionary, but today, do you know what, folks? They've got it spot on. Because Jesus' words go right to the heart of what it means to be part of his kingdom. In short, in these challenging and stirring words from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is outlining what it means to be a saint, what it looks like in practice in our lives. His words remind us pretty clearly that being a saint is not about walking around looking rather sanctimonious with your halo slipping off your head or doing the overtly religious stuff, you know, ending up with sore knees from all that praying, or attending every single service that's been put on. No, being a saint, as Jesus' words of blessing declare, is a lifestyle that is well and truly grounded, grounded in real life. Pack your halos away then, folks. Pack your halos away. They're not going to be needed. Oh, no. So then, blessed. What does it mean, blessed? Well, firstly, let's look at what Jesus actually said. You may know know some of you that a a film came out a few years ago called Lost in Translation. And that describes, I think, what happened when the Beatitudes, these words of blessing, were translated from the original Aramaic language into English. Now, I want to thank uh, biblical scholar William Barclay for some of what I want to share with you um, at the moment. Unlike our version of the Beatitudes, those words of blessing, the original did not include a verb. In other words, it did not say blessed are. Instead, what Jesus almost certainly did was use a form of exclamation that was very common in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. For example, we can see in the opening words of Psalm 1, Oh, the blessedness of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Oh, the blessedness. This is the form Jesus would have used when he first spoke the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, these words of blessing, they are not simple, simple statements. They're exclamations. Oh, the blessedness of the poor in spirit. Oh, the blessedness of those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Oh, the blessedness of those who are peacemakers. Achoo! Ah, bless you. Oh, the blessedness of your sneeze. It's an exclamation. It's an exclamation about a present reality. What we've got in the Beatitudes are not some pious hope of what will be. No glowing, but rather vague prophecy of of some future bliss. They're congratulations on what is. Congratulations on what is right now. The blessedness that belongs to the Christian saints is not a blessedness which is just postponed to some future glory. It exists here and now. It's not something we will only enter into. We've already entered into it. We've already dived in and are swimming around in it. Yes, just as we know, we live in these these in-between times when the kingdom of God and his salvation of creation is not yet fully established. So the fullness of this blessedness is not yet a reality, but it's still a reality nevertheless. Maybe in this life, in this in-between time of the kingdom, we can only experience the shallow end of the pool of God's blessedness, if you like. But when salvation is finally revealed in all its breathtaking wonder at the end of time, then we'll be diving into the deep end of that blessedness. Nevertheless, the pool of blessedness is still a reality for us right now. So what of the actual word blessed? When Jesus used this word and when we use it, 
What is he and what are we actually saying? The word used in the Beatitudes in this passage in, is the Greek word used in the New Testament, makarios, makarios. And we can get a sense of why the gospel writer chose to use this word to convey Jesus' meaning most accurately when we consider, believe it or not, the island of Cyprus. Oh yes, I get you guys didn't hear that, see that coming, did you? I don't know either. <laughs> I gather that actually Greeks always referred to Cyprus as He Makaria, which means, in contemporary English anyway, the Happy Isle. The Happy Isle. Wow. They did this because they believed that Cyprus was so lovely, so rich and fertile, that there was never any need to go beyond its coastline in order to find the perfectly happy life. Its climate, its habitat, mineral resources, flora, fauna, meant that it had within itself all the material needed for pure happiness. But folks, again, we are kind of lost in the kind of lost in translation territory. Although in English we might describe Cyprus as the Happy Isle, and actually that's not entirely accurate. Because the word we use, happiness, has its root, hap, which means in the word meaning chance, hap meaning chance. This happiness then is dependent on the changes and chances of life. This is happiness at the mercy of circumstance. And that's the very opposite of the makarios of Cyprus, the word used by the gospel writer here. This describes a happiness which has its secret in itself, a happiness which is untouchable, it's serene, it's completely independent of the chances and changes of life. We would describe this not so much as happiness, but as joy. As Cyprus held within itself what it needed for blessing, not dependent on what was beyond itself, this joy, this blessedness is what Jesus is declaring in his words in the Sermon on the Mount. In John 16, verse 22, Jesus says, no one will take your joy from you. The Beatitudes, these words of blessing, speak of the joy that exists independently of circumstance because this joy is a person. This joy is a person, the person of Jesus, who right now is alive and interceding for us, praying for us at the right hand of the Father, assisted by the Spirit, who knows the deepest longings of our hearts. Jesus, our joy, seeks us through our pain. Jesus, a joy which sorrow and loss, pain and grief cannot destroy, which nothing in life or death can take from us. Jesus, our joy, present with us now and always. It's not to say, of course, that pain and sorrow or any other difficult or challenging circumstances do not impact us. Of course they do. We all know that. We're living through some pretty challenging times at the moment which are impacting us all. And let's not forget, these kinds of times impacted Jesus too. He knew what pain and sorrow were. Remember his distress at the death of his really good friend Lazarus. It's more that even in the midst of these things, the blessedness of Jesus, the joy of his very presence, can never be banished from our lives. The happiness of the world is indeed pretty fickle. The blessedness Jesus is speaking of here is not. No, the Beatitudes are an exclamation that here and now, no matter what we are experiencing, blessedness, Jesus, our joy, is to be had in his very presence. And that, even if shaken, ultimately will never be destroyed. So congratulations, my fellow saints in God. Oh, the blessedness to be found for us this day in Christ. Those of us who are poor in spirit, or who mourn. Those of us who are meek, or those who hunger and thirst for a godly life. Oh, the blessedness to be found for those of us who are merciful, pure in heart, those of us who strive for peace in our world. Oh, the blessedness to be found for those of us who are persecuted, 
because they follow Jesus. Yes, things may be tough, but there is blessedness to be found in the presence and love of Jesus. It is a blessedness called joy. So, <laughs> bless you. Oh, the blessedness of that sneeze right now. Congratulations, my fellow saints. Be blessed. We're now going to declare our faith, that faith that we share with all the saints who have gone before us, using the words of the Creed on page five. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. For each of our prayers today, I'm going to light a candle and say a short prayer and then leave some space for you to pray for the people and places and situations that are particularly on your heart and your mind today. As always, we'll begin and end our prayers by singing the Teze chant, O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Lord God, we pray for the church here and throughout the world. We thank you for the example of the saints who have gone before us and ask that like them we would reflect the love and light of your son Jesus in our world today. We pray for our world. And especially for those places where it feels that there is more darkness than light. We pray that you'll be with those who are faithfully following Jesus in difficult situations throughout the world and seeking to bring your light to others. Would they know your light and peace, especially today? We pray for those we know, our families, our friends, our communities. We hold before you those known to us who are struggling at this time, especially those grieving for and remembering loved ones who have died.
And finally, we pray for ourselves. We bring to you those things we're carrying today. And we light this final candle to remind us that when we are in darkness, you promise to always be there with us. And we light it also to remember the hope of eternal life, which is found in you. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, O oh Lord, hear my prayer, when I call, answer me, O oh Lord. collect for this All Saints Day. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints. Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. gathering our prayers and our praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we come towards the end of our service, we have the opportunity to share God's peace with one another, whether that's with those who are watching with or remotely with each other. In his letter to the Colossians, Paul says, To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really good to worship God together. And we'll be here again next week at 10.30 on our YouTube channel with a service of family communion. So we would love it if you could join us again then. Next week, our service in the church building on Sunday is in the St Francis Church building in Thorpe Willoughby and it is at 9.30. So 9.30 next Sunday morning in the St Francis Church building. And a reminder also that this afternoon, the St Wilfred's Church building will be open between two and four for anyone who would like to come and light a candle in memory of a loved one or loved ones who have died and to use the space to reflect and pray. And that's instead of us having our usual service of um, remembrance and thanksgiving, which isn't possible at this time. So please do make use of that opportunity if that would be helpful for you. I think that's everything I need to say. So we're going to end with a blessing and then our final hymn. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil. 
and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Our final hymn today is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And the second verse reminds us again that we belong to that company of saints united in Jesus. So let's sing together. Thank you so much for joining us today. Take care and God bless.